As the club car special pulls out, we reach for our favorite newspaper and turn to our favorite page, the March of Events and City Life section. This section is a feature of the Hearst newspapers everywhere and is written by the ace humorists of the day. Will Rogers, O.O. McIntyre, Milt Gross, Arthur Bugs Bear, Sam Hellman, and many others. There are also plenty of peppy cartoons drawn by leading artists. A grand slam of sense and nonsense. <laughs> Well, here's a snappy-looking cartoon. It's a scene backstage at a musical review. The producer and the stage manager are standing in the wings talking. One act has gone off and another is due to come on. The orchestra is playing the cue music. Say, what is the holdup? There's that Spanish dancer. She should be on now. She's coming. I just sent Joe for her. She's back there eating chili con carne. She's all the time eating chili con carne. <laughs> Such a business. I got customers out there waiting for Spanish dances, and she's always eating chili con carne. <laughs> here she comes. Hurry up, senorita Tamale. You're on. Si, si, senor. Here I go. There you go, and don't forget to go big. <laughs> I, I, I'm worried. At rehearsal today, she was rotten. No pep, no snap, no nothing. What's a Spanish dancing without pep and snap? I... She'll have plenty of pep tonight. Look at her now. Say, say, that's good. That's well. Look at the way she's jumping around and hopping. Huh? Got plenty of pep now, hasn't she? Pep is right. What is that dancing that she's doing? Looks more like a jumping jet. She's jumping six feet in the air, I'll bet. Hot stuff, eh? Eight feet in the air. Hey, look how she's jumping. How do you like that? I got... Ten feet she's jumping, say, what is it? Is she going nuts or goofy? She's all right. I just tried a little experiment. Experiment? What kind of an experiment are you trying, huh? I just put a few jumping beans in a chili con carne. <laughs> <laughs> all aboard, club car special. Next stop, off the bug bear. All aboard. <laughs> Bugs Bear has stirred up a lot of excitement over a guy named What a Man. What a Man is the pride of Rough Town, and according to the natives, he is a bone crushing, ear tearing fool, the toughest guy that ever wore a crowbar for a stick pin. But lately, rumors have been drifting in about an even tougher guy named Toots Jackson. So a reporter has been detailed to locate Toots and give him the once over. At last, Toots is located, living in a cave high up in the Sierras, and is now being interviewed. Is Mr. Toots Jackson home? Yeah, that's me. What about it? Well, I'm from the Rough Town Press. I'd like to interview you. So you're from Rough Town. You think you got a guy down there what's tough, eh? Yeah, yes, his manager would like to arrange a match with you if you would be interested. Well, I might take a run down there someday. Well, I'm sure the town would be glad to pay your traveling expenses. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll just hop on the first avalanche I see going that way. Ha, ha, ha. My goodness. Well, maybe you could let us know just when you're coming. Oh, that's easy. Just get one of them little needles that keep track of earthquakes and things like that. When you see it swinging around like a pinwheel, look out for Toots Jackson. Get it? Yeah, yes, sir. I'll make a note of that. Here, have a seat. I'll pull up a boulder for you. Oh, my goodness. There you are. Uh, thank you. Oh, oh, what was that? Oh, I don't mind them. Just some mountain lions that live in the cave here. I'm sort of boarding with them. <laughs> Gracious sakes. Why don't you chase them away? Oh, that comes in kind of handy. 
For keeping the grizzly bars away. Oh, oh, I see. You mean you're afraid of grizzly bears? Oh, me? Oh, I, I only thought... Well, that, quit uh, thinking. Only thing I get against grizzlies is they're so bow-legged... It takes up all the room. <laughs> <laughs> all aboard. Club call special. Next stop, Will Rogers. All aboard. Will Rogers is one of the highest paid feature writers today. His articles in the City Life section of the Hearst newspapers are read by millions of readers from coast to coast. But all this fame has not dimmed Will's interest in his first love, horses and wide open spaces. A short time ago, he deserted the Hollywood movie lots for a trip to a Texas ranch. Early on the first morning of his stay there, he was given a saddle horse and in company with another guest, went for a ride. Shortly after their departure, Will's host and hostess fell to discussing him on the porch of the ranch. Yeah. I wish I could have got along with Will, but I had to stay here on account of a long-distance phone call. He sought me as a marvelous horseman. But it's been years since he rode the range. Funny how he keeps in practice. Well, he's got his polar. Will's one of the best polar players in Hollywood. I wonder how he finds time to do all the things he does. I don't know, but there's one thing sure. Horses would be the last thing he'd give up there. Just part of him. Well, what horse is he riding now? I give him that uh, new Kentucky thoroughbred. The one you just bought? Yeah, I wanted to get Will's expert opinion on it. I paid 75000 for it, and I want to see if he thinks I got stung. Somebody's a-coming, I tell you. Well, it looks like Will and Tom. They didn't ride very fur. Hey, look at the way Will's riding. Looks as almost as if he's a fallen off. Oh, that couldn't be. The horses don't live it would unseat Will. Well, he's got both arms wrapped tight around its neck. Well, I won't embarrass Will. I'll call Tom here and ask him about it. Hey, hey, Tom. Anything wrong with Will? Nothing wrong except just something you should have told him before he started out. Well, what was that? Did the horses give him trouble? No, sir. She behaved like a perfect lady. Well, what did happen? Well, everything is going all right up until I told Will about the 75000 you paid for her. Yeah, well, what happened then? Well, from then on, he got to thinking about the price and had to hold on with both hands. <laughs> <laughs> all boat. All aboard. Next stop, O.O. McIntyre. All aboard. Millions of readers follow the philosophical, humorous, and informative paragraphs that O.O. McIntyre writes for the Hearst Sunday newspapers. Everyone likes to know McIntyre's opinions and also to hear some of the interesting facts about well-known persons which he so often reveals. Now, Billy Murray follows Odd McIntyre closely, and we'll ask Billy to give us the latest from McIntyre. Well, since this is a radio program, you might like to hear what Odd McIntyre thinks about radio technique. He recently said that uh, he didn't believe firework stuff goes over well on the air. In his opinion, the artists uh, who endure are the soft-spoken, sometimes faltering ones, uh, like our old friend Will Rogers, uh, people who have a real story to tell. He thinks that uh, Irvin Cobb, with his hearty dialogue stories, is one of the biggest bets, and he believes that uh, children have an unfailing radio instinct. If they like a program, so do grown-ups. In telling strange facts about people, McIntyre writes that Bruce Barton always dictates his material. Oh, and so does uh, Arthur Brisbane. That uh, Gracie Allen really has a brother, George. That uh, Jeanette MacDonald has a collection of English sheepdogs. And uh, Mussolini, believe it or not, likes Mickey Mouse films. J. Pierpont Morgan likes his afternoon tea. 
And do you know that Polo Negri has never ridden in a subway? Uh, then Odd McIntyre muses along with this uh, humorous question. He says, uh, speaking of curiosities, there are times that I am twinged by a strange desire to know certain answers. For instance, I've been wondering uh, who makes Kate Smith's clothes. And I don't want any Omar the tent maker replies either. <laughs> All aboard, club car special. Next stop, milk gross. All aboard. And now for a short stopover with Milk Gross's famous character, Joe Runt. Joe, as his devoted followers all know, is always taking the advice of his employer, Mr. Thorndike. At the present moment, Joe has been advised to give his waistline a little attention. And now as we find our hero in a restaurant ordering a meal with unusual care. Well, boss, what are you going to have, eh? Let's say now, what would you suggest? Well, uh, how about a nice dish of spaghetti, eh? I'm afraid not. Spaghetti contains too much starch. Well, uh, how about a nice beef pie with the dumplings and the mashed potatoes? That's all right, except for the dumplings and the mashed potatoes. They're too fattening. Uh, maybe you like a little uh, nice kidney stew with the brown gravy and the noodles, eh? Oh, no, that's worse yet. I have to eat something light. What's that special you got up there on the board? I can't read it from here. Oh, that's a very good. That's a very nice. A hamburger steak with onions, a French fried potatoes, and a corn fritters. Oh, that's too bad. What's too bad? That's good, miss. That's very good. I know it's good, but it's bad for me. Well, why is she bad for you? Well, you see, I have to watch my waistline. <laughs> You're wrong, mister. You don't have to watch your waistline in this restaurant. Why don't I? <laughs> All you're watching at this place is the hat and the coat. <laughs> Once more, the Club Car Special Program has come to a pause, but every listener may go further on this excursion of fun and merriment by securing a copy of the Hearst Sunday newspaper and reading the March of Events and City Life section. It is in this part of the newspaper that you will find long articles with laughs from beginning to end. Each article written by one of the world's leading humorists, Will Rogers, O.O. McIntyre, Bugs Bear, Milt Gross, Sam Hellman, and others. No other newspaper or publication has such a list of authors who have reached unparalleled fame in the world of comedy. Keep up with the best humor of the day by reading these columns of comedy just as millions of others do. The Club Car Special will make another excursion into your home next week at the same time over the same station. Be sure to meet the train and enjoy another 15 minutes of original comedy. (laughs) 